Okay, this is the stage with the antenna now extended out before being pulled up. Okay, now she's up with the antenna on and connected. I made a squid pole with slinkies on the ladder. So just over 15 meters or close to 50 foot, I think, tall. That's the telescopic parallel feed in the middle of the ladder there. Mint. Some people might be interested to have a look inside uh, uh, my crazy looking van. I know that uh, one fella yesterday asked, so I figured I'd do a quick video. Firstly, a quick rundown on what all this is. That's a uh, dipole array, basically. Uh, curved around, fed at the top, all of them. And they're uh, uh, helix, uh, continuous loaded uh, dipole array. Great on 80 and 40 meters. Uh, operating in that position while the ladder system's down. This ladder system can tilt up and extend up and become a, uh, a quick deploy mast and it's simply operated by a winch at the bottom that comes to the end of the inside ladder in an extension ladder system and it uh, mounts into a permanent ladder that's fixed to the roof rack that doesn't move uh, as a hinge it goes through one of its rungs. I'm using a high tensile bolt uh, with grease and, and washers and nuts. Uh, as the uh, system starts to tilt up then a rope gets tension on it at a certain point which then starts to pull up the extension part of the ladder. So by the time that it's uh, vertical it's at full extension. At the front of the ladder I have a 9 meter squid pole with aluminium slinkies on it uh, to extend out before I tilt the ladder up if I want to use the uh, continuous loaded vertical. The continuous loaded vertical uh, actually has a section that is two aluminium tubes uh, that slide into each other as a telescopic balanced feed line along the extension ladder. Being a fan of low loss and efficiency, being a fan of balanced feed lines as opposed to coax, this balanced system then goes on to 
a six conductor balance system with a low mass foam casing and dielectric material. This allows me to run along metal objects or through or past metal objects without any problem just like coax but low loss and balanced. This explains how the line is configured as you can see that I know it's AC but we'll just call it for a moment in time, <laughs> freeze time, positive, positive, positive and of course negative, negative, negative. So every conductor has its equal and opposite around it. It all mathematically works out balanced. And the fantastic thing about it, of course, is there's six conductors instead of two. So that means that any of the energy traveling along these uh, copper conductors is generating a much smaller uh, magnetic field around it. And therefore, uh, mutual coupling with other conductors is reduced drastically simply because of the uh, reduced magnitude of the uh, field around the conductor. So they can be closer together with still less loss and remember the uh, conductivity factor is greatly increased by more than three times in comparison to a typical 450 ohm window line. Uh, this, this, these ones, uh, this particular conductor that I was, uh, feed line I was talking about is using something like, uh, I think this one's a, uh, probably, this one might have a 2 mil uh, or 1.5 mil copper wire used, so there's six of them. And another version, I've got a lighter weight version using a very lightweight sort of foam material. Uh, by the way, these materials, they're literally draft excluders that you peel the stickiness off the back and you put stick the strip down but I've got them stuck to each other, so there's three runs of it. Um, one, two, three, four in the middle, and five, six. And so it's lightweight, there's actually space in there, you can move, the wires can move a tiny bit, so they're mostly surrounded by air and low mass foam dielectric material. At this point, this switch, this green switch here is what I use to switch on and off my auto tuner. The auto tuner does uh, is in line with everything that's selected by the switch. So uh, I've got uh, the option for six transmitters and six antennas, though I'm only uh, using, I think, uh, two transceivers on this particular switch, and uh, the three antenna ports occupied. Although it's, uh, these do travel up very close to other metal objects and go through bulk heads where I'm just using the center pins. So this is, you know, one side of the transmission line, the other side of the transmission line. Don't worry, these are not all touching. <laughs> it just looks like it. Um, yeah, and that goes through and that's how I connect. So the antenna that, uh, so that's a balanced feed line and that's going to the antenna that's uh, being tested at the moment. Now for a look inside the van. Firstly, I have a laptop installed between the driver and passenger seat. It can just fold down. It folds down like this, and then this all bends down, so that one's right down, that one's vertical. I've got a uh, spring on it to help hold it up when it's in the up position so that it doesn't keep resting back to the seat. See, it comes up quite well and doesn't really want to fall down, but when you push it down, it will stay. Having the laptop in the van is handy. I've got myself a couple of little SDRs, which I'll be playing with. And also I found a uh, good value USB oscilloscope. So I'll be able to put things on the scope, uh, even when I'm out portable. I have my uh, 857D face mounted on my visor, so it's easy to operate even when driving. I also have a cheap uh, little UHF VHF there that I use solely for monitoring. <laughs> its antenna system is interesting. It has a very short piece of coax that goes straight through the roof, <laughs> straight to a bulkhead <laughs> um, with a uh, little 270 antenna on, though I mostly don't listen on 270. This is my headset for when I'm operating and uh, I've got to come up with a better way. I'd like it mounted more above me and uh, in a way where I can use the speakers 
instead of the headset, but still use the microphone. And I'm literally using a dodgy uh, light switch as my uh, push to talk on the dash. I use the laptop to uh, supply the audio source when I'm running a test beacon. And underneath the laptop, I don't know if you can see here, yeah, is a, uh, uh, an adapter that converts the uh, uh, analog electrical audio uh, straight into optics. And so that there's no issue with uh, RF on the audio. This runs across then to another module, which then converts back to analog and goes straight to the 857D, where I could put the face on in this operating position if I'm operating portable on my lovely tidy bed. Oh dear. <laughs> and under the bed I store lots of things, all my tools and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, having a look in the van, it's messy. Goodness me. Got a lot in here. <laughs> She's heavy. Down here, there's three AGM batteries, deep cycle. Each of them is 100 amp power. And to the front, is it under here is another of the identical batteries. And under here is another of the identical batteries. So that's five 100 amp power batteries. I use a DC to DC uh, transformer instead of a solar regulator. So this is the type that you'd use in a you know, truck's 24 volt system to give you a nice uh, stable 13.8 volt out. So I'm running this 200 watt panel straight into this and then this to my battery. And that uh, helps on a sunny day with the panel up here. Helps keep the uh, battery system healthy. I have my uh, SWR power meter on a swivel so that I can uh, turn around and see when I'm driving in the mirror. Okay, this is viewing with the uh, meter set on the average setting. I'm on the 20 watt scale. So I'm going to uh, switch over to the... Uh, um, <laughs> having a brain fart. Um, not average on PEP now so you can see I'm not really hitting the 10 watt there for those that think that I run high power on these experiments this is the monitoring radio only the display is faulty so I don't contact the ACMA saying that I'm on 2 megahertz <laughs> I have all my uh, odds and ends here as well connectors and adapters and screws and all that sort of stuff and more, but all my other types of connectors and adapters stored in here, including all my screwdrivers and whatnot. And uh, in here, I've just got some odds and sods. And down in here, where I've got the danger sign, is where some more of it's all happening. So, um, in here, I've got the 857. Uh, that little module down there, that's a uh, simply a converter for a television signal from uh, NTSC to PAL. And that's just the back of the uh, 707. I failed to mention this line as well. This is a uh, self-shielding balanced line. Uh, the conductors at the end are not the, what the conductors that run through. This one's using uh, four conductors and each of them, I think, are four gauge. So pretty beefy copper conductors. And they're configured uh, one, two, three, four, and if you can just imagine, positive, negative, negative, positive. Again, self-shielding, balanced feed line, low loss, just like the others, but with less conductors, but more beefy. And as you can see, it has no problem running a long metal object. Today I'm testing stage four of series three of my Flux Lake antenna systems. As you can see, it's a very tiny antenna, about a meter long, 14 centimeter wide. And uh, I know I'm being strange. I'm testing on 80 meters in the daytime. It's not a, a daytime band. And that's why I'm testing. 7-3 all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a quick peep around inside and outside the van. The van tenor system. 7-3 all. VK3F. VKI.